All right, so it is that time again where I'm gonna be doing a three looks, one palette, plus a review with a palette that I've been trying, and I got a ton, a ton of requests to do a three looks, one palette with the Elf and Jay Kissa to the Rescue palette, so that is what we are going to be doing today. If you have not seen the inside, mine is very dirty because it's well loved, but this is what it looks like, and I did do a swatch party first impressions type video, which I can leave linked up here if you guys wanna go watch it, where I swatched all of the shadows on my arm, but I also did a first look, so if you wanna see another look besides the three that you you're gonna see in this video. Check out that video and there will be one more. So a total of four looks on my channel. But yeah, let's go ahead. I like to keep the intro pretty short and sweet. So let's jump right into the tutorial and then I'll sum it up at the end and kind of give my overall thoughts on the palette. Okay, so I'm gonna go in with Sadie first and I'm keeping that towards the outer half of the crease area and just working on blending that in. As you can see, I feel like it's a decent shade. The more I worked with it, the more it looked a little bit chalky, I guess you could say, or maybe a bit grayish, but I don't know if that's just the color. Looking at it in the pan, I feel like I'm expecting a more of a vibrant color and more pigment, but putting it on the eyes, it looked a lot thinner and a more gray toned than I expected, but overall the color isn't bad. And once I put that down, I went on the inner half of the crease with cannoli and I really wanted this to be nice and vibrant. So I'm using a very dense brush and working on building it up. Again, this is a shade that it looks so bright in the pan. And then when I put it on my eyes, it could be because I had a nude tone base on, it wasn't really white, but it didn't look as intense or as blue as it looked in the pan. But with that said, I thought it blended out really nicely and it was very easy to build up with that little brush and so I'm just kind of going back and forth until I like how that blend is and then I'm gonna move down to the outer corner and pack on pretty girl and as you can see pretty girl is kind of a sad shade because oh my goodness it's just it it took a lot to build it up and even once I did build it up it's just not the best purple out there this is like definitely when you're talking about purples from the drugstore, I feel like this holds to all of those stereotypes that I feel like purples from the drugstore have. It was chalky, it wasn't very pigmented, it was very dusty, it feels very rough. That's another thing, it just feels so dry in the pan. Overall, definitely wasn't my favorite to work with when it came to this palette. But anyway, moving on, I am going on with Thatcher and I'm just trying to use that to add to the purple on the outer corner to not only bring more depth, but also just to get it more intense because that purple was so sad on the outer corner. It just, I didn't want to sit there and try to build it up anymore because it just kept looking so chalky so I went back over with Thatcher and overall Thatcher it feels a lot nicer than the purple does it goes on a lot more pigmented and overall just feels nicer then taking the NYX glitter primer I am setting that down before I am taking Bailey and putting that all over my lid Bailey is a really soft shimmer it goes on very beautifully I had absolutely no issues packing that on I will say that if you want a brush to really pack it on choose one that's more firm or use your finger one that's a bit softer or just not as dense or stiff it just takes more time I feel like and it's a little bit harder to pick this shadow up but using it with a glitter glue I thought it went on beautifully it was very nice and pigmented and also stayed really well all day and I didn't have any of the flakies or the shimmer falling out onto my face once that was down I just made sure all the edges and all the blending look good as best as they can with that purple in the outer corner and then I finished up the rest of my face and then for the lower lash line I'm once again taking that shade cannoli and just smoking that out all on the lower lash line I just really wanted to get this a lot more blue than I felt like you could see in the inner corner I I really wanted the blue to pop so that's why I used just that shade all on my lower lash line and I do think it showed up really nicely and then for my inner corner I'm going to be using the Lime Crying Highlight Palette in Opals. I'm going to be using that pinky shade the kind of pinky duochrome there and just packing that on the inner corner and once that is down that is going to be the completed look. Um, all of the details that I saved or that I can remember for the rest of my face are going to be linked down in the description box if you are curious check there. As I said this look wore really well I really liked how it turned out and overall it was very pretty I just feel like if I had a different formula of purples to work with, I feel like this look would have been 10 times more pretty because I feel like overall the purples just looked a lot more gray and kind of patchy as opposed to purple and intense and pigmented. Moving on to look two, we're gonna take Yosemite. We are putting that all into my crease, and as you can see, this shade, I think, shows up really nicely. It may be a little thin when we're talking about yellows and formulas in general. It feels relatively soft, though, and you can build it up. Like I said, yes, it's still thin. Yes, it's a little bit more thin, but I could build it up and work with it to get it to the intensity of the yellow, the type of yellow that I was looking for. Then right below that, into the crease, I took Zuma, and I really focused that on a more dense brush to build up the color and just create an ombre, and this shade also, 
I thought applied really nicely. It's a very soft shade. It's a nicely pigmented. And compared to, I feel like a lot of the mattes in here, they can be kind of dry and thin. Zoom is actually, I feel like, very pigmented and has more texture, more depth to the powder, if that makes sense. So overall, I thought Zoom was really nice, very easy to work with and very pigmented and shows up relatively true to color. Then to continue deepening this up, I am going to take Pepper right there into the crease. Pepper isn't the best shade though. And uh, honestly, I'm not sure which matte in this palette is worse, that purple pretty girl or Pepper. They're both pretty bad, chalky and not pigmented. So after going back and forth, I really don't feel like you can see it at all. I just kind of left it there. I was like, whatever, let's keep on moving. And I decided to go over to the purple and take Sadie and work that into like the deepest socket of my crease there. I know purple is a little crazy to go for, but I was wanting to get really adventurous with this look. And Sadie is the better purple of the two. So as you can see, I feel like as I worked with it, I was very slow to build it up, but you can definitely tell there's purple there. And it's a very nice blend into the red, the orange, and the yellow. I feel like Sadie shines best when it's used more in a packing motion and more intensely than trying to sheer it out and blend it out. I just feel like when I do that, a lot of the grayish tones or just kind of sparseness kind of shines through. All right, so continuing to make this look super crazy, I am going into Thatcher and packing that on my outer corner. As you can see, packing this on the outer corner, I thought it showed up really nicely overall. Maybe a little bit of patchiness as I was packing it on, but all things considered, I was pretty happy with how this color packed on, it built up, and then also how the edges, how I was able to diffuse it out. To try to help tie the whole look together, I did take a little bit of Pretty Girl and put that right into the crease and to help not only blend the blue out, but also blend it into that crease shade that I have since I did use Sadie, that purple in there. I thought Pretty Girl could be a deep color, still purple, and just help tie in the blue to the purple. Again, Pretty Girl isn't the best purple, but I feel like it did its job in helping to blend out that blue, and that's kind of all it did for me. Moving on from there, I'm just cutting my crease. I don't remember the brand name of this tool, but I will leave it down in the description box and link it. Anyway, once I have that down, I am just taking a clean brush and tapping it out because I am putting a matte shadow on top. And when I do that, I really try to make sure I tap out my concealer so there isn't any like weird pigmentation or it's not evenly blended out because you will definitely be able to see that putting matte shadows on top of it. I did also top it with a white because I forgot I wanted to originally top it with white because I want to see how intense and how blue this cannoli shade could be so anyway after I put a little bit of white I'm taking cannoli and packing that on top because if you guys have seen the pictures you know cannoli looks just so blue so crazy blue even in person it, the intensity and brightness of the blue is amazing and so I wanted to see since I'd used it in the previous look in the crease and it turned out a lot more dull I wanted to see how bright it could be packed on and as you can see it is bright it is beautiful but something with this formula I don't know if it has to do with how dry the formula is but once you touch it to your skin once you use it in a look the color that you see in the pan gets a couple shades deeper again maybe it's not a bad thing if you're looking at this and not wanting that bright of a color but for me personally I saw such a intense blue I was like I want that color blue on my eyes I didn't feel like I could really get that look to come across on my eyes so once I finish out the rest of my face I'm just taking a little bit of pretty girl and smoking that right against my lower lash line keeping it really close to my lash line and then after that I'm taking a little bit of a bigger brush but still a small kind of blending brush and I'm using Sadie and buffing the rest of that out and then for the inner corner I went ahead and took Firefly and just packed that onto my inner corner and that was going to be the completed look overall I love how this turned out I think it's a fun color combination I think you can tell in my right eye it looks like there's like a dark spot in the matte blue but that's that's because I opened my eyes a little too soon after putting on the glitter liquid liner so that is completely my fault but other than that I thought the whole look turned out really pretty and it was definitely a fun one to wear. Okay, going in with my third and final look, I'm taking Zuma and blending it out into my crease. I've kind of already talked about this. It's definitely my favorite when it comes to the two oranges. Millie is just a little bit, it just comes off as more of a mustard orange on my eyelids, I guess you could say. And it's also the formula itself isn't as pigmented and nice and smooth as Zuma is. 
So anyway, definitely prefer Zuma. And once I have that all blended out, I'm going to be going into Tank and really packing that on my outer corner. Tank is a pretty decent green. I feel like when you touch it and when you like feel it with your fingers, it feels very dry and there's no denying. It's just a very dry formula and I thought it would be really patchy to work with. I feel like you can see a little bit of the patchiness tendency coming out, but working with a little bit, just focusing on building up the green, I felt like I could get the look I wanted and I could get the intensity that I wanted with the green with just a little bit more work and playing with it and whatnot not and building it up but yeah it's definitely not the easiest dark green to work with but at the same time it's one of the better deeper tones in this palette moving on i am taking cassie on a really tiny little blending brush and using that to deepen up my crease trying not to go too high and kind of take over zuma but definitely deepening up and just adding a lot more depth to my crease with that casey shade and it also helps to blend the green out a little bit right there and just make it more of a seamless blend and not such a harsh contract between the dark green and the orange this shade is definitely 10 times better than pepper in the palette so when we're talking about reds in this palette casey is definitely the better one and it's also feels a lot smoother and it's a lot easier to work with and as you can tell like for this look I thought it performed really nicely. So I just kind of kept going back and forth with those three shades until I built it up to how I like. I would say that's the one downside to this palette. While you can get really pretty looks, I feel like overall I just have to go back and forth a lot between all of the different eyeshadows to really build it up because with the formula in this palette in general, they're just very fickle to work with. And once you lay it down, yes, it looks beautiful, but if you're going and adding too many colors or going on top with something else, you can easily kind of dust away the previous shade you put on. So I feel like that's just something with all three looks, all the looks that I did using this palette, Palette. There were just many times that I kept having to go back and forth and kind of reapply colors and rebuild up colors because I kind of blended them away with the previous shade. So honestly, that's the biggest drawback when it comes to this palette is you just have to go back and forth so often and so many times to really get the pigmentation and the intensity that I personally like to see with the final look. But anyway, moving on, I'm going to be taking this MBA glitter glue and just laying that down with my finger to make sure that the shimmers really stick and stay on all day. And then first up, I'm going to be taking strawberry and using, like I said, a very flat brush. I feel like a brush like this which I can link it down in the description box but this was the best type of brush to use to pick up these shimmers because the shimmers are just so soft and um, mullient that a fluffier brush or something with you know too loose of bristles just isn't going to pick it up as nicely so anyway I'm just using that to lay it down pretty much all over my lid but not going too high and then once I have set that down I'm going to be taking Reagan which is the green shimmer in this palette and I'm just going to be kind of almost cutting out the crease and I know the color choices are a little questionable but I hadn't used Reagan in a look for this three looks one palette and I really wanted to use it so I was like huh let's see what this red and green look like together and so I put that on top and then just kind of went back and forth between the two shades and did my best to blend them out I feel like it ended up looking pretty well, but in hindsight, as I'm editing this footage, I did wish I had more time to kind of go back and forth and get more of a seamless blend. Um, the day I did this look, I was running out of time, so I just had to keep on moving and I wasn't able to get as seamless of a blend as I wish I would have. But overall, I don't think it looks terrible, but it's maybe just a question of color combos and that's my own fault. But anyway, moving on, uh, once I finished my face, I came back for my lower lash line and I'm just smoking out tank once again, right against my lower lash line. And then to blend out the green, I'm going to be taking Millie and just using that to buff out and blend. And as you can see, this Millie, like I was saying, is more of a mustardy type of orange and not as bright of an orange as I was wanting for my crease, but I figured it'd be good to use it in this look just so you guys could get a, a feel and see the difference between the two oranges in this palette. And then to finish out this look, I'm taking Suki, which is the shimmer orange, and packing that on my inner corner. I used this in my first impressions video, and I really like it as an inner corner highlight. It doesn't really come across that orangey because it is more of a kind of like an iridescent topper kind of shade. There isn't a whole lot of pigment to it, so it works really well as an inner corner highlight. But yeah, that is going to be it for this look. That is the third and final look in this Three Looks One palette with the Elf and Jay Kissa to the Rescue palette. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, overall, when we're talking about wear for all the looks I created, using this palette I thought the wear was really nice I wasn't too disappointed at if anything I would say the mattes weren't as intense and vibrant I could definitely see a little bit of a wear down but it's just a tiny bit and it's to my critical eye where I'm very critical when I go into my mirror at night to really look and see so it wasn't that bad though and the shimmers too I didn't notice a ton of fading or any creasing at all so I was very happy overall
So there you have it. Those are the three looks that I did. Let me know down below which one was your favorite. I always love to hear from you guys whenever you leave comments. But let's go ahead and just give you the final thoughts when it comes to the To the Rescue palette by Elf and J. Kisseff. I was trying to figure out a way to summarize my thoughts because it's not a bad palette. I mean, you get a lot of shadows. This is $20. So when you divide it up and think of it that way, this isn't a bad price. This isn't a bad palette. Yet there was something about this that just kind of, mm, I mean, it was okay. Like, I'm not saying this is a bad palette. It's, I'm not saying it's like a terrible formula, but there was something about this palette that every time that I created with it, I just felt like I had to work too hard to get the looks that I wanted and or the look could have turned out so much better if I used another indie palette in my collection. I, and I think that's the best way to describe this palette. If I were to have bought this about four or five years ago when I wasn't into indie at all, when I was just getting into color, just getting into eyeshadow, I probably would have been over the moon excited. But with saying that, this would have probably been a palette that I would have reached for and I would have seen like this amazing, bright, intense look on Instagram and would have been like, I want to recreate that. I would have reached for this palette and used this palette to get that look, but it wouldn't have been as bright and as intense as what I saw on Instagram. And I feel like that's the best way I can describe it. As you guys saw with this blue, this blue right here looks so crazy vibrant, but when you actually use it, even with a white base, it's just not as intense. It gets a lot deeper. There's a lot more depth to it. Same with the yellow. The yellow and the blue I think were the most disappointing for me because they looked so intense, vibrant, and bright, but they ended up being a lot more just dull, I guess would be a good way of describing it. Not that it's not pigmented, just the color it translates on your skin is duller than what you see in the pan. And like I said, if I had bought this like five, six years ago, I probably would have loved it because I would have been able to get so many colorful looks. And I would have just thought that that's the way colorful looks end up looking on your face. And I would have been like, oh, Instagram, those Instagram pictures are just always edited. But since I have tried so many indie brands that do have amazing pigmentation, amazing color, amazing formula, I know that I can get the color I see in the pan on my eyes. I'm thinking of Menagerie, Give Me Glow, uh, even Shroud now that I'm trying Shroud, um, a Colored Rain, a Slush Palette. You see how bright those are? If you haven't seen my Three Looks One Palette with a Slush Palette, I'll leave that linked up here go watch those because the looks that I get are so vibrant and the colors are so true to what you see in the pan. So I think that's my biggest like drawback to this palette is that I was using it and I was just like <clears throat> it's just not what A I expected to get when looking at this palette but B what I know I can get in indie makeup. So I feel like that's the best way to kind of summarize my review. This is not a bad palette. It does okay. You just have to work harder to get the looks. But with that said, if you like simple eye looks, if you like to have color but you're not into color, I can see this being a great companion. If you're someone who's on a budget and can't buy more expensive palettes, then this might be a great option to give you that color, to give you that kind of intro into color. Because that's another thing. I think this is a great palette. If you are someone who is not diving into color, you've been into neutrals for forever, I feel like you could create a lot of looks with this that, like I said, they're just a bit dimmer. They're just a bit more dull than the intense, vibrant colors that you can get with indie makeup or that you would expect to see when you like look at that blue or look at that yellow. You're kind of like, oh my goodness. But when you actually use it, they're a lot more just a little bit deeper. They're not that intense and vibrant. So I feel like this would be a little more easier, friendly to beginners in color. But on the flip side of that, I feel like maybe it's not the best for a beginner because it is so tricky to use. And I feel like if you're not very experienced with blending out colors and knowing that you have to go back and you know continue to build up or just not blend too much or just use more packing motions, I don't know how friendly this will be for beginners. So I don't know. It just all depends on what you like, what your preferences are. But is it my favorite? Not really. Overall, this isn't a bad palette. I want to make sure I'm very clear. This isn't a terrible palette. It's just, it's got a lot of pros and cons. And because I have experienced so much from indie makeup and just some really good palettes with amazing formulas, trying to go back to e.l.f., I was just kind of like, mm, like, it's okay. You know, it's okay. And I understand that the beauty of e.l.f. is that they are more affordable, especially if you are on a very tight budget. This is $20, yes, but you can wait for a sale and get it cheaper. You can buy it at Target and use, you know, their coupons. You can buy, you know, during a sale at Target. There's a lot of other ways to get it cheaper than the $20. I even on launch day got it cheaper than the $20. I forget what code I used, but it took a couple of dollars off. And I want to say I paid like $16 or $17 for this. So that right there, it's just, it's very affordable. So in that respect, I don't think this is a terrible palette. But if you are very deep into the indie world, if you are very experienced with pigment eyeshadow, I don't know if you'll be super excited about this palette, at least the mattes from my perspective. And I feel really bad saying that, but when you've tried other palettes, Juvia's Place is really affordable and I feel like their shadows stay more true to what you see in the pan. So it just depends on what you're looking for, which is why I don't want to say this is a terrible palette, but if you're talking about just a solely drugstore, which you can walk into a drugstore and buy, I think it's okay. 
I think it's pretty decent and it's really affordable so I think that's great that you have a very colorful affordable palette available for you at the drugstore. I'm gonna leave it with that. Um, like I said this is not a terrible palette, it's not an awful palette, it's not an absolute dud. It's just I think more so suited to a very specific type of person and for me and my channel and the audience that I tend to have I just feel like if you're like me and into the indie makeup you might be a little disappointed or you you might just not want to work that hard when there's other palettes that you can work and you know get an eye look in half the time. So with all that said I hope you guys found this review and tutorials, the three tutorials that I did, helpful and informative. And if you did, please give this video a thumbs up as it helps me a whole lot in the whole YouTube algorithm. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you want to continue following me and getting new content from me, I am over on Instagram and I post there about every day. Not only little quick tutorials, if you like very fast little, you know, one minute ones, but also flat lays and close-up pictures. If you want to see really close up on the eyes, I occasionally post those. So that's what I do over there. And I'm also in my Instagram stories every day, sharing with you guys, my kids, my life, and my look of the day. So yeah, I'm over there on Instagram, LadyKatie92. But with all that said, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye, guys.